I just learned about these sliding boards or transfer board for someone in a wheelchair. And two days ago, one of my coworkers told me she needed one. I never even knew they existed. And so she asked me if I could build one. And I was like, certainly. And, and this is, I think, just a really good project for, for helping people. I don't know if this is one that you really want to try to make some money off of, but it, uh, it's just a good thing that you could do for those around you. You can make it out of beautiful wood. This is ambrosia maple. And it's almost eight inches. It's like seven and three quarters inches wide. And I went with the 30 inches that I saw on that Amazon board. And that Amazon board was honestly a really good price. Now, if you look at other places, it can get really expensive, which that's how things are in the medical community from what I understand. So the part here uh, was definitely the part that took the most time. It was about a 30 minute project. So I set up my square. She wanted it about uh, that length from the outside, which is closer to the edges than the picture that I showed you. And so I just inched my way in. Now, the mistake I made is that I thought the the bit was pretty much in the middle of that square, the guard right there. And you can see I'm just stopping that guard with my finger on each side. But what you'll notice is that whenever I flip it over and I start to going from the other side, it doesn't completely line up on the edges. So of course I made my mark, make sure I lined it up on the other side. And this is a great way to do it, great way to make a quick guard. And again, I'm just inching in and then I'll, I'll zoom in and show you the difference in just a moment. The other side I did better because I knew that I need to keep turning my router the opposite direction to get it to be the same. And there it is. That's like a good half inch. So I was just surprised that the difference was that big. So of course I had to go back to the other side and and keep turning my router. Now another thing that's different from that Amazon picture is because these handles are so close to the edge. I didn't do that kind of uh, bevel, how it beveled toward the the ends of it, and I just didn't think it was that necessary, and it would make it weaker. It would make it less strong, so I didn't, didn't copy that. Now this is the same lady that I gave that rustic walnut bowl to, and so you'll notice also when I start sanding, I don't get rid of the uh, rough sawn marks. I just let those stay. Now here I'm uh, routing all the edges, and again, you know this still fascinates me. Yeah, you know, I've been seriously woodworking for over a year now, but it just amazes me how this one step makes something look so much more finished and professional. And I, again, I've said this in other videos, if you haven't bought this little $30 router from Harbor Freight, um, it's great to have. And you can keep different router bits on different routers so you don't have to keep changing that. So I started sanding it, went from, I did start at 60 grit. I usually don't go that low, but because they're, I wanted to get some of the rough sawn areas down a little bit. I went with 60 grit. I had to make sure I got rid of all my pin marks also. And then I went all the way up to, I think, 180. Um, I didn't think I needed to go to 240 like I normally do. And I didn't charge for this project. I just, I just gave it to her. And again, this is one of those things I think it's just good to do for the people around you. And man, you know, if you've ever had a booth at a craft show and tried to sell woodworking, man, everybody's, not everybody, many people are like, oh, my uncle does that, or my grandfather does that, or my brother does that. And so people are surrounded by others that do woodworking, which I think is great. So if you're a woodworker, I encourage you to see if there's people around you that could use this. Let me know what you think.